Nothing. No, hey. Hi. Hi. I like that vest. Well, thank you. It was a gift. And now, a very old joke. Okay, we got that one out of the way. Now, an old joke that involves two old guys. You have probably heard this a million times. If you have, Stay with me for the ride. I'm going somewhere, I swear. If you haven't heard it, it's actually, I think it's funny. So, there are these two guys, old guys like me. And they are, um, we'll say, residents of a mental health facility. And uh, they decide after a couple of years of being best friends in a mental health facility, this isn't a lot of fun. They don't want to be there anymore. So they hatch a plan, a, a, a shenanigan to escape. They, uh, they don't take their night-night pills. They uh, wait for the orderlies to head for their desks, and they head for the roof. They head for the roof, and the plan is simple. You run across the roof, you leap a small distance to the laundry building, down you shimmy down a ladder, and at the bottom there's a loading dock with no fence on it because, well, it's a loading dock, and you're free. The first one leaps like a gazelle! bad impersonation. <laughs> Leaps like a gazelle and lands and it's beautiful. The second one, <clears throat> apparently among his list of neuroses was a fear of heights and falling. And, and he, he says, no, I can't do it. The other one is his friend. He's been his friend a long time. He knows these things. And so he reaches in his pocket and said, I thought ahead, I borrowed this from the order these. And he clicks on a flashlight. He clicks on a flashlight, he waves it out across that chasm and says, just walk along the beam, you'll be perfectly safe. The second one says to the first one, are you crazy? How do I know you're not going to shut off the light when I'm halfway across? <laughs> now it's an old joke, and if those of you who are nerdy enough will actually know that joke the first time I heard it was 25 years, 26 years ago. 26 years ago, we're old because that joke was the final moment between, anyone? You got it. An origin story between Batman and the Joker. This amazing moment where the Joker basically tells a joke and explains everything you need to know about their relationship. They're both nuts! <laughs> so, I said I was going somewhere with this and now I shall. It's a joke we all know. I just told it to you. You now have two versions of it. I'm going to hit you with a third. So I'm doing my taxes over the weekend. <laughs> I'm doing my taxes over... I'm sorry. I, I lived through it. But I'm doing my taxes over... <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> and I, I'm doing what everybody does, which is taking a one-day project and turning it into a whole weekend through little things we like to call huge amounts of avoidance. I've, I've, done, I, I've done things around the house, I've, I've, I've repaired circus props, and at one point I had to have a really in-depth conversation with one of my performers about old comedy with Red Skelton, a genius of physical and verbal and musical comedy. And so I'm showing videos, because of course that's work-related and much more important than those things over there. And I turn on this video, it says, it says Red Skelton doing stand-up. And I said, fine, I don't care, I'm just trying to avoid that pile of work over there. And I send it out. And I decide to watch it after the fact and I realize he's telling the killing joke. Well, that's like 1940, 1950. This joke is really old. <laughs> Which means the guy who wrote the comic book, who I thought just pulled that out of his head, actually stole that. And I stole it from both of them to tell it to you a moment ago. Now, theater has a lot of theft in it is what I've come to realize. <laughs> That's, that's what you need to know. And then we have an opportunity, and you know this if you're a musician, you know this if you're a spoken word artist, you know this if you're an actor reading someone else's script for sure. It is not, it's not the joke, it's how you tell it. You now have resources to see three different versions, all of them completely different of this joke. I guarantee you at least two of them were better than mine. 
But tonight, on this stage, you're going to see people. Some of them are going to bring their own work, and you're going to get caught up in their own original material. Some of them are going to choose to bring work that they've seen out there in the world, and they want to share with you in their own voice. And when they do, realize it's a unique opportunity. It took me a while to figure this out. It's a unique opportunity to see not the performance, but the performer. I'm standing up here right now talking to you. Simple as day. You and I spending some time together. You and I spending some time. You and I not spending so much time together. <laughs> but the point is, I feel bad now. I feel bad now. Hang on, come here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't want to make you get up or shower. <laughs> and yet he needs to do both. The point is we get to see these things. We get to see them and see how a performer brings them to you. Tonight, when a performer takes this stage, please give them the appreciation they, they deserve for either the comedy they bring, the tragedy and the emotion they bring, the silliness they bring, and even if they bring something you've seen before, realize they brought it up here so they could do it in their own voice. The place we do that is called the open stage. Welcome. <laughs>